Hello friends, welcome to yet another episode of Techie Tuesdays, where I answer to your tech and career related questions. I'm SRV Kumar, Certified Solution Architect and IT Career Coach. So folks, if you haven't done yet, please subscribe to my channel so that uh, this channel grows and I keep on answering to your queries, and concerns and questions related to IT career and technology. So without further ado, let's get started with today's questions. So the first question is asked by Shubham Jadav. He is saying, as a fresher with below 60% in engineering, will it be a good option to do full stack developer certification for getting a job? Shubham, is the certification provider guaranteeing you a job after completing the certification? If yes, then you should probably go for it. If no, then my suggestion for you would be to first get a job and then look for certification which is suitable for your job. Because just doing the certification without any job and without any job guarantee, it would be just a waste of money and time. If you have money, you can of course uh, go for the certification, but still my suggestion would be to first go for the job and if go for certification only if the certification provider or the institute who is giving you the certification uh, gives you placement guarantee or placement assistant that you will for sure get the job after completing the certification. Next question is asked by Abdullah. He is asking, is ML.NET based on .NET Core? Yes, Abdullah, ML.NET is based on .NET Core. For those who don't know what ML.NET is, ML.NET is basically open source machine learning framework provided by Microsoft. It's completely open source and it supports various machine learning algorithms. So if you want to create a train your own models and create a machine learning application, you can use ML.NET and Shisha to learn and implement machine learning. So yes, Abdullah, ML.NET is based on .NET Core. Next question is asked by Sanjay Thakur. He is asking, can I become a Python developer after 12th and get a job in India? Sanjay, you can learn Python after 12th via any online courses or from any institute. But for getting job, you will need to complete some degree or some certification from some reputed institute because most of the Indian companies they need some degree certification in order to provide job to their employees. So if you want to get a job in any Indian IT company, then of course you need to do some kind of degree or some kind of certification after uh, doing 12th uh, completing learning uh, Python. But if you want to work as a freelance developer or while learning Python, you support to open source applications and you can show in your resume that yes, you can, you have supported these open source uh, application, then you might get chance to uh, work on freelance Python applications on websites like Upwork or Freelancer or Guru.com. So these kind of from these uh, freelance websites, you can get uh, freelance gigs, freelance jobs uh, for working in Python. But for getting job in a proper company, you would require degree or certification from a reputed institute uh, or college. Next question is asked by Yash Mehta. He is saying, I am working as a business analyst with one year of work experience. Is it too late to switch to web development? Yes, it's usually other way around. Most of the developers want to come into business analyst or go into business analysis rather than uh, doing development job because they hate coding. But if you really love coding and if you want to do or go in web development, of course you can surely go. Uh, just talk to your manager or uh, whoever is the in charge, your project manager or your account manager and ask him to involve in development related tasks so that you can get opportunity to work on sir. Or you can do one more thing that you can learn, uh, learn programming language of your choice from online courses and probably create some tools uh, which you do in your day-to-day -day activities. Create some open source tools and show it to your managers so that uh, they come to know that, okay, yes, this person knows development also along with being a business analyst. So that way they will uh, include you in development related tasks uh, slowly, slowly. 
so i think that's the way to go or you can do full fledged web design or web development course from any online institute and then look for job as a fresher but my suggestion would be to do it side by side like learn via online courses and start developing some tools show it to your manager and then grow gradually or move gradually next question is from joylin silveria uh, i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly so his question is quite funny one why do mails sent from iphone have the signature sent from my iphone so joylin uh, it's kind of a default signature given by iphone so you can change this by going into settings and then uh, like changing the signature there there is an option to change your signature in your mail setting in iphone and you can change it and remove it from whether sent from my iphone or like you can write it anything so it's basically it's by default set by iphone and if you configure your email on iphone it's done by default but usually people do it to show off that they have iphone it was earlier like it was done in the beginning days uh, like earlier days of iphone when uh, having an iphone was considered a luxury uh, it's considered a luxury even now in india so uh, people just do it to show off frankly speaking otherwise you can remove it uh, by going into settings and changing your signature so next question is from malapalli shiva prashad i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly i'm sorry if i'm not uh, so his question is what's the difference between service oriented architecture or soa and microservices so shiva service oriented architecture is kind of a design pattern to implement application to create enterprise application in the form of services so that like different kind of requirements can be fulfilled by different services and they can be utilized enterprise uh, enterprise wise in different uh, like different places okay whereas microservices is basically um, it's also kind of a design pattern to again implement service oriented architecture itself but it's it's kind of an implementation mechanism where each and every service has uh, like each and every service is kind of available as a se separate deployable unit so for example in case of if when we talk about service oriented architecture and if we follow uh, monolith architecture to implement service oriented architecture so in that scenario what will happen that let's say we have an application which is uh, for like e-commerce application so uh, we have services for e-commerce application so we have customer sections there we have account section there we have uh, like product section there so all these different sections are available as services but they are deployed as a single service or they are deployed on a single server as a single service so that's kind of a uh, even though like not in a single service they might be using load balancer or something since it's a big application but the thing is that it's the whole source code is kind of tightly coupled so of course it's a service oriented architecture is like where you are providing exposing services to be used by different people and it it can be used enterprise wise but again it's is tightly coupled whereas in microservices what what happens that you can you can uh, divide this into separate modules for example for user authentication for or for products uh, like whole product life cycle you have you can create a separate microservice and one team can work on that microservice and then uh, like it it can be worked as a single deployable unit and Okay, so if you want to understand more about microservices, of course you can see uh, my video about microservices. It's a like uh, it's interview question video that what are microservices. So I have explained there um, that uh, what are microservices and how they can be utilized or how they are developed. So when we say in single word, service-oriented architecture is enterprise-wise implementation, where is uh microservices is kind of an application wise implementation next question is from ashutosh maheshwari he is asking do companies fire you if you open a side business ashutosh is it primarily depends on the hr policies or kind of employment agreement you have with your company so uh, like uh, 
most of the cases like if you might have seen that doctors and lawyers they work for many companies even CAs they work for many companies because their employment agreement is like they are working as a consultant so if you are working as a consultant in a software company you can of course do a side business I mean company cannot fire you but you need to like uh, check your employment agreement that does that employment agreement specifically say that okay you have to spend so many hours in your office and uh, how like how the uh, intellectual property for your company because if you are working in IT or if you are working in a software company so there is uh, the code of uh, whatever code you write in your company is the intellectual property of that company so you need to go into all those like HR laws and bylaws and you have to see so it's better to check with the company that whether like what are their rules for uh, like their employees doing side business or doing uh, any kind of uh, side gig next question is asked by Anish Narayan P he is asking if you have to choose a programming language to learn by looking at only three parameters what parameters would you select so Anish, the three parameters which I will select would be number one, the language should be widely acceptable or it should be uh, like used by many people in the market. Number two, it should have a ma like major community support. And number three, of course, it should pay me well. So if I follow the all the three uh, all these three criteria, I see only two or three language which comes into my mind number one is of course shisha because i love shisha uh, number two is of course python because of all this uh, ai and ml shenanigans and number three is javascript because javascript is still the most popular language for doing web development and all different kind of development next question is from nana thakur she is asking is it possible to join a product based company after working in a small service based company for 3-4 years? If yes, then what will be the procedure? Nana, yes, it's possible to join a product based company after working in a small IT services company for 3-4 years. I have seen many uh, people from uh, different IT services companies to join product companies like Microsoft because I'm in Microsoft technology so I know only uh, people who have joined Microsoft so yes of course it's possible uh, to join but uh, most of the product company have certain hiring, hiring criteria so you need to check that whether you fulfill those hiring criteria or not like uh, certain percentage in your 10th 12th and graduation or probably doing BTEC or BE from certain colleges so you need to check in the uh, like requirement uh, or job requirements which is given on the job portal of that company that do you fulfill those hiring criteria or not. If you fulfill those then of course you can apply for the job, clear the interview and uh, go for it. But if you don't fulfill those then I really doubt it would be a possible uh, possibility I would say. But uh, yes. If you fulfill those hiring criteria, then of course you can join uh, a product based company. Next question is from Deepali Sharma. She is asking, we are asked to cross skill ourselves into new technologies, but when we ask for a job opportunity in a company, we are rejected saying we don't have the experience on that skill. How should people move to new domain by just learning and getting a job and get job offer? Deepali, you are not the only one. It's kind of a catch-22 situation where company uh, want experienced people in new technologies, but they don't uh, like they don't get chance to uh, new people who just learn those technologies uh, from doing some courses or doing some certification. Uh, like it, it, it's kind of a, of course it's kind of a catch-22 situation. But if your current company is asking you to upskill in new technology and then give you a, uh, then probably they might have some chance or they might be giving, getting some project in that technology. That's why they are asking you to upskill. But if uh, let's say you are upskilling yourself or searching for a job or like in general, the company is asking that uh, yes, you should upskill to grow in your career. Then my suggestion would be to 
while learning that technology look for some good open source projects in that technology or be uh, like kind of uh, member of the community who is working on that technology for example let's say you uh, your company skew to learn react js so what you can do is like you can of course do a course in react js along with that probably you can create a side project in react js or write blog or show that side project in your blog or talk in local uh, com- react js community so pr- my suggestion would be probably to show your capability in that technology so that that way even if you haven't work in your company in that particular technology but since you have some data to prove that you know that particular technology you might get uh, an opportunity or job uh, in that new technology next question is from priyam ganguly he is asking what do you think is the next optimal choice for a software developer not so proficient in maths working on dotnet and php with 5 6 years of experience cloud uh, whether it should be cloud android mobile development iot or ai or is it something else altogether so priyam as you already said that you have 5 6 years of experience in dotnet technologies and php also so my uh, like english inclination would be more towards dotnet because i am a dotnet guy so uh, since you you accept yourself that you are not that much proficient in maths although it's not needed but you can uh, like you can't go on custom uh, like uh, ml or ai algorithm writing or something uh, like those things or data science related things because probably they need a uh, certain knowledge of maths but yes you can use pre built ai uh, sdks for example uh, when we talk about microsoft pre built ai sdk there is microsoft cognitive services then in ibm watson is there aws also have similar kind of services so you can use those ai serv- you can learn to use those ai services and learn to create different kind of application so if you want to do android mobile development i think you should uh, go and learn xamarin or mavi that is m a u i multi application development interface i think uh, something like that multi platform application development interface so that's the new version of xamarin forms so either you can learn xamarin or xamarin forms to create mobile applications if you want to do iot development uh, i think it's better to go on uh, stick to mobile like web development and mobile development rather than uh, like iot or something because that is uh, since your experience current experience would be in web more so it would be an easy transition for you to go for like learn further uh, .net related technologies like .net 4 or .net 5 and asp.net 4 or blazor so you can learn these technologies move ahead even i have um, uh, i have created a video on why you should learn c sharp and .net uh, so i'll uh, put the link of that video in answer to this question uh, like just adjacent just adjacent to this question itself in the video description so you can uh, see that what all frameworks you can learn in .net to d- uh, develop different kind of application so if you want to go for desktop development you can learn certain framework so and the thing that uh, the thing that you already have 5 6 years of experience in dotnet so learning rest of the things in dotnet would be easier for you so my suggestion would be to stick to uh, the technology which you have expertise in so next question is from sneha shish koali he is asking how can one work as a it professional and also be a youtuber So Sneha Shish it's pretty common nowadays that most of the IT professionals are becoming youtuber because of this covid 19 time most of the people have access to good webcams mics and uh, computers in their home so earlier the, the people who were writing blogs now they have moved on to creating youtube videos just like me i i am creating this youtube video and i also work in uh, it like i work as a 
principal solution architect in one uh, company uh, and i develop applications there so yes uh, it is possible uh, of course you need to take out time for that uh, like i do these recordings on weekends or in late nights so you have to take out time for doing the recordings and editing and it primarily depends on what kind of content or what kind of video you are creating so if you are creating something related to music or something related to some other topic uh, which you have expertise in then of course you can create videos it doesn't matter uh, you uh, but if you are creating uh, videos related to the topic on uh, like the thing on which you are working in your company let's say you are .net developer or .net person just like me and working on a .net technology the uh, sorry and also creating youtube videos based on .net technology then make sure that you don't uh, show or you don't leak any company copyrighted data okay so you have to make sure that that you don't name take the name of the client of your company because those kind of things are kind of classified so you need to check with your hr that what to tell and what not to tell so it primarily depends on the kind of content you want to develop for youtube but yes of course it is possible to create youtube videos while working in it next question is from sumit kumar he is asking which programming language is most popular today is it the best programming language sumit if we follow the stack overflow survey then the most popular programming language is javascript as per uh, most uh, popular programming language survey done by stack overflow in 2019 that is last year uh, it was javascript was the most uh, popular programming language but whether is it a best programming language or not is kind of a controversial topic i would say because uh, as i said like as i have said many times that my favorite programming language is of course c sharp uh, but uh, like most of the uh, people use uh, like most of the people work on web applications so that's why they considered javascript as their best programming language uh but in my terms i would say that it's javascript is of course popular and it's also good programming language but in my opinion uh, the best programming language is something which is more versatile which has more options available and that is i would say c sharp or any uh, like good compiled language maybe it can be java also but i prefer of course c sharp Next question is from Manoj K B Manoj Kumar K B and he is asking I am an average engineering final year student my question is that I got an offer letter from a private company when completed my initial 3.5 months training from there can I resign my software developer job to UPSC preparation Manoj I have couple of questions of my own for you. Number one, have you signed any job agreement with the company uh, which you have joined that you have to work there for a certain period of time in uh, after completing the training? Like I have seen uh, some companies uh, get a bond, like sign a bond with the fresher they hire for like two three years that they have to work uh, with them for around two years. Otherwise, they have to pay one lakh rupees or something like that. so have you signed any kind of agreement like that so if you have signed that then do you have money to pay for that agreement and also to pay for the tuitions and all those things for preparing for upsc if any answer to this thing is yes then of course you can resign from your job and go for preparing for upsc but again you have to work very hard because as you already yourself saying that you are an average student but there are many people who are average uh, who are average but they have cleared upsc so it's uh, like uh, it's possible for you to clear uh, like clear the upsc exam but you should be sure that you are financially stable or your family can afford the expenses of preparation for the upsc so 
if you if your family can afford that and if you haven't signed any contract with your current employer then of course you can resign and go prepare for the UPSC and best of luck for your UPSC exams so these were my answers to your tech and career related queries in this episode of Techie Tuesdays i hope you like this video and if you find this video useful for you and your friends please share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel so that i can create more such videos for you so until next video take care bye bye